hi and welcome back to my channel and if you're new hi and welcome to my channel i'm doing the rising sign readings and again i'm a little bit late but not as late as last month <laughs> so we're up to aquarius rising and for those of you who haven't seen these before i usually like to talk about what astrology is going on in the skies at the moment because often it can um you know balance out with the reading kind of thing can come into it okay so we already know that venus and mercury are completely out of their retrogrades um they're both definitely direct not in any shadow period anymore um and then pluto stationed direct but he is still in his post shadow and my guess is at least till the end of the year he's going to be because he's a really slow mover that takes 248 years to go back to the same point in the zodiac um so yeah so pluto's in post shadow saturn by the time you see this will also be in post shadow because again he's stationed direct um neptune will be following suit as well and be out of his retrograde on the 6th of december he'll be then in pre-shadow from there on chiron will actually be direct on the 27th of december jupiter um will be stationing direct moving into his um, post shadow on the 31st of december then uranus is going to be um <laughs> not until next year in january on the 27th of january in 2024 now also mars won't be retrograde all this year not in any shadow he's not going to be retrograding until the second half of next year in 2024 um having said all that mercury will be going retrograde in december and the reason i say it now is because it's around the 13th of december i think it's going to be retrograde so when we're talking about the pre-shadow and the post-shadow as well as the retrograde time frame the pre-shadow is going to dip into the last few days of um, or last couple of days of November. So we're looking at around about the 28th of November, 27th, 28th, that we'll start to feel his retrograde energies again. He's going to be retrograding in um, Sagittarius and the topocentric. I, I go by the topocentric true sidereal because, system because... Um, that goes by the visible sky like if you were looking through a um, telescope and where you'd see the actual constellations it takes into account the actual size of the um, constellations and so if you were looking to into a telescope right then you'd see where the actual planets are placed and what constellation they're in and where they are in that constellation um, so yeah so mercury will be retrograding in sag which is what is sag for you i think sag is your 11th house aquarius themes your aquarius rising but um so you know wishes hopes dreams um community um, technology blah blah that's all covered by the sign of sagittarius for you so you'd be looking at what's going on in your 11th house as to how to work with mercury retrograde so yeah so that's the last the the pre-shadow will start in the last couple of days of november and move from there so pretty much all of december is going to be mercury retrograde and jupiter retrograde and uranus retrograde and the others are, are in um post shadow um except for chiron um yeah so um what else i wanted to um make it uh, just a point that although i'm a bit late like i've been held back with a few things because really i've been jumping into um the energies of the retrogrades and the eclipses to sort of um because they i needed to make a couple of tough decisions because i uh, things was taking time away from me um how do i put it there were certain things i was doing that was taking away too much of my time and effort where i could be using it say on this channel for instance um so i've had to make a couple of tough decisions to leave some things um yeah and so what I, because i wanted to do um 
a video for Jupiter retrograde like I did with um, Venus retrograde a few months back. Um, but obviously we're in the retrograde now of Jupiter. So we've passed through the pre-shadow, so there's no point covering that. And we're in the actual retrograde now. But that this retrograde phase still is up until the very last day of this year, the 31st of December. And from there, then it moves into the post-shadow. So I want to sort of get my skates on and, and try and get a, a video done for the Jupiter retrograde like I did with Venus and put it on my community tab. It's not going to be a card reading. It'll show the um, charts and um, walk through for each rising sign what sort of things might come up what things to expect and how to work with it yeah so that's kind of what i want to do I want to jump into that as soon as i can um now having said all that also the eclipses some people are saying oh well we're out of the doorway of the eclipses no we're not because they have a three month at minimum three month window on either side of the actual eclipse event because they're really potent powerful energies it's not like your regular new or full moon um yeah so they have three to six months really but it's the the, the three months is the really concentrated potent energy that um you can work with um so yeah we're still in the in the eclipse window portal whatever you want to call it so we're talking what was mid um mid-october they they happened um so we're looking at probably mid-January before they sort of start tapering off and, and being less less um, intense energies. Um, yeah, so the, we're, we're still in the doorway of it, if that makes sense. Now, I also say with the eclipses, because all new and full moon events um, have a t around a two-week time frame between each one, like you'll have your new moon two weeks later, you'll have your full moon two weeks later, you have your new moon, that sort of thing. And because of the eclipses being, you know, the three month at least of potent energies for each of them, to me, I feel that there's like an amalgamation of energies of the full, both the full moon eclipse and the new moon eclipse. Um, so that you can work with both energies to clear away anything negative or 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 make changes tweaks changes whatever so that you can then work with bringing in the new moon energy um if that makes sense that's that's how i view it anyway so anyway you've got quite a few cards here and i'll try to stop <laughs> um babbling on i think i just mentioned before about the person who whinged about me babbling on or maybe i said it with the last one <laughs> i'm not over it yet um but yeah, it was a bit annoying and they, they really made it out to be worse than it was. But I am more aware of trying not to babble, but sort of trying to run through, give you enough of information to sort of manoeuvre around and on that and, and know what you want to do working with it where possible. So anyway, let's jump into your reading for Aquarius Rises. <laughs> Pluto. Pluto's the first card off the rank. Um, well, Pluto's in is in um, station in station direct in his post shadow. So we're looking at what sort of things came up during that time, what changes happened, and where do you want to go from there? Gemini communication, the, the communication sign. Where's Gemini for you? Uh, fifth house, I think. Um, yeah, fifth house. So Leo themes covered by the sign of Gemini. That, that's a fun combination, actually. That's not so fun. Eighth house, <laughs> Scorpio, intensity of Scorpio. Eighth house, who covers eighth house for you? I think that's Virgo. Wow. Yeah, intensity and focus on duty, service, health. Shared resources sex taboo occult debts taxation credit cards bank accounts all that sort of thing is eighth house and the health of that is coming into focus vesta home and hearth she's an asteroid 
Eris. Ooh, Eris is also an Astra, and she's known as the street fighter, the activist, you know, standing with the, the um, signs up and, and, and standing outside building and protesting, that sort of thing. And Eris can be a, a kind of um, combative type of energy from time to time. Depends it, how you manage to work with her. Jupiter. Jupiter's retrograde. Now, the thing with retrogrades is just because they're retrograde doesn't mean you have the opposite energy. It doesn't always mean that things are all going to go topsy-turvy. If you're working properly with the, the retrogrades, then it's going to work to your favour. Jupiter's about expansion and growth. The, the Sag themes of higher learning, um, travel, um, luck, expansion, um, what else? I feel like I've missed something there. It'll come to me. Um, Scorpio, Scorpio themed house. Okay, where's Scorp for you? Scorp is 10th house. 10th house Capricorn themes. Ooh, intensity with your work life. Okay. What else have we got here, though? Expansion and growth. What feels like home and hearth. And how you can um, clear away any negativity, perhaps. And do the, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The stereotypical thing that... that most people associate with Pluto being that once you clear the negative energies, you can become the phoenix rising in said situation. Sorry, I'm scratching. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, phoenix rising, expand and grow. In some way relating to others. New moon. Well, see, this is good. This is new moon energy. Uh, where's the new moon? It, it's... We, we're, we still have the energies of last month's new moon eclipse as well, which I think, if I remember rightly, the, the solar eclipse was more powerful than the lunar one. I think the lunar one was a um, partial. Mm, I can't remember. Sorry. Um, but, yeah, this is anyway... In this deck, I remember this being a very lucky card. So this is bringing you good luck. Expansion, growth, which is also a lot of astrologers um, stereotype Jupiter as the lucky planet, the good luck planet anyway. And I think in this deck, this also says it's about luck, expansion and growth. So you've got two lucky cards here. And this one's also telling you to clear away any negativity so you can be the phoenix rising. Ooh, lunar eclipse. Bam. Okay, so there's still, yeah, there's still some sort of lingering energy with the lunar eclipse. Mm, full moons are about, can be about endings. Let's see what else has happened in this. Uranus, well, that's your ruling planet. Uranus is um, rules Aquarius and 11th house things. Your potential for sudden change, enlightenment and awakening. Bam. We started off with Pluto. <coughs> Pluto, your ability to transform, take a big leap forward and rebirth. Phoenix rising, what did I say? Expansion and growth, clearing away the negativity so that you can jump into the new moon like expansion coming through. Mars, well, as I said, Mars is not retrograde and will not be retrograde all this year. And this one says your physical energy drives strength and fighting spirit. Eighth house. Eighth house has come through a second time, radio. Um... Trying to get them all in, um, squeeze them all in, because you've still got a few cards to go. And I don't want them off camera. Hang on. 
I think that's right. Okay, so this transformational, transformational, see, Pluto, because Pluto rules Scorpio, yeah, Scorpio, and eighth house themes. So you've, yeah, see, you've got one, two, three, four references to Pluto, Scorpio. This transformational area of your life is about shared resources and intense emotions. Scorpio is intense. Pluto, Pluto. Eighth house, wait, so that's five. One, two, three, four, five. Five references. Number five, when we jump into the numerology, if you get number five again, five means freedom. I feel like you need to free yourself. That's right in the middle, smack bang in the middle. Phoenix rising. Uranus breaking up concrete or whatever of um, false beliefs. I want to say in yourself, about yourself or your situation. Fight the negativity, see? Street fighter, Eris. Venus, the part of you that desires beauty, success, indulgence and valuables. Now, Venus rules the signs of Libra and um, Taurus. Now, I don't think you've had either come through because Taurus is in your fourth. Where's Libra? Uh, ninth. We have Jupiter, but we didn't have ninth. We've got eighth house. So there's an, a measure of intensity. But it's this, uh, yeah, shared resources. And there's two rings here. So I'm wondering if this is something about relationships. Nothing's really come through yet, though. Where's Gemini? Gemini's fifth. So that's, well, fifth house can be romance and love affairs, as well as children creativity as well. Let's see what else comes through. Chiron healing. So healing needs to take place and will take place. Um, sixth house, Virgo themes, craft. Now, did we not have Virgo come through? Virgo was in your eighth. Yeah. So Virgo, the Virgo house in the sixth then must be Cancer. Yes, yeah, six house Cancer is Virgo because because six house is Virgo themed, the Virgo themed house covered by the sign of Cancer, home and family, and here we have home and hearth up here in the middle at the top. Um. Yeah, healing, home and family. Wow, Virgo. There we go. Virgo house. And then Virgo, wow. Okay. Um, there's definitely a big change that needs to happen. And like I've always said about the eclipses, you can be in the driver's seat if you know how to work with the energies. You know, if you ignore it and avoid it, <laughs> stuff's going to happen anyway, especially with the lunar eclipse because the thing is you really want to be in the driver's seat especially with the lunar eclipse energies because if we aren't prepared to do the work if we dig our heels in and we refuse to do the work and we you know put our blinkers on or blinders or whatever you want to call it and pretend certain things aren't happening or, or, or ignore it in some way or avoid it because of fears or whatever well, then the eclipse energies come along and go, oh, you're not doing the work. I'll just pull the carpet from under you anyway. It's, change is going to happen. Look, there's too, too much energy here to say otherwise. Change is going to happen. It could have to do with relationships, but the Libra house is covered by the sign of Leo and you haven't had that yet. And you haven't had Libra. Because where's Libra? Ninth, yeah, I keep thinking. Okay, so these may or may not have reversals. We'll see what's come through here. But yeah, there's there's change that needs to happen in some direction for you. 
but you've got new moon energy as well. See, it would have been slightly different if it was just that without that. But because this new moon energy is here too, that means you can clear it. And as I said, from memory, the lunar eclipse was partial, whereas the, the um, solar one was a full eclipse. Um, yeah, because we had the, um, the ring of fire kind of thing, didn't we? A ring from memory, yes. That was more powerful. That was more potent, that eclipse. So clear away any negativity, anything that's pulled you down you and or others because i feel like it's a relationship thing too because there's the rings there there's you know the commitment or the avoidance of commitment for some reason do you have a fear of it in some way that perhaps has been holding you back and it's a, really a fear that needs to be cleared out going to happen anyway somehow whatever needs to be you know the lightning striking the concrete and breaking it up and the five freedom where did we get five again we got it somewhere i'm pretty sure we did <laughs> home and hearth fourth house home so there's yeah there's some form of upheaval in the home that needs to be cleared up bring in the new happier kinder gentler venus energy in whatever way that is um might be a need to commit to yourself and your self-growth so you can be the phoenix rising and so that this can turn around and you can have a happier home because you've taking care of yourself because virgo is all about health health duty service looking at your own health whether that's physical emotional social whatever the case this is virgo energy the virgo house and the virgo sign that happens to be in the eighth house which is screaming <laughs> screaming at us here you know Mars take the action. Mars is not in retrograde and won't be all this year. So, yeah. You can turn that around. Leo, shine. Okay, we've, we did get Leo. Leo is your seventh house. Which? Seventh house. Libra ruled. Okay, the seventh house is um, the Libra themed house that is covered by Leo. So yeah, so this is telling me about there's, there's, there's a relationship of some sort that needs to be healed. Yeah. And we've got Gemini, so there's communication needed. Uranus is also a communicative sign. I mean, oh, sorry, Aquarius. Uranus ruled Aquarius, which is you. So communication is needed to clear up any upsets, stand up for yourself and maybe others. Because change is going to happen. See, this is, this, this, Uranus is right next to the lunar eclipse. So something is going to have to blow up and blow away. Whatever negativity, whatever has been holding you back. The eclipse is saying, no more, it has to go. It's not helping you, it's not empowering you and or others. I really feel that it's got a lot to do with you, though, that you're needing this empowering too. Mm. Okay, what else have we got? Cancer Immerse. Here we've got it again. See, the Cancer-themed house, right? Vesta Home and Hearth, which is also cancerian like this is the cancer sign immerse immerse in the gentle energies you haven't been doing that clearly at least not for yourself because see the thing with virgo is they're usually very um what's the word for it not stoic um they're usually great at helping everyone else but they're terrible about their own self 
care. And I can say that because I've got a lot of Virgo in my chart. So, you know, no, no shade in anyone who might be a Virgo son here. Um, or anyone who knows, or if you know a Virgo or whatever, no shade on them because, of, you know, I've got a lot of Virgo too. So, yeah, you haven't been immersing in this gentle energy of home and hearth. And this needs to happen. Um, progressions, journey. Yeah, take that journey, metaphorical, physical, whatever is needed. Because you have to be aware, this is going to happen. Something's going to be moved, changed. Uh, some sort of dynamic is going to be ended in some way. And you want to be in the driver's seat to be able to manoeuvre it to the best way possible for you and or and for you and others whoever's involved whoever is important to you be in the driver's seat you don't want the eclipse in the driver's seat because that's going to be extremely painful let me tell you i have had a couple of eclipses full moon ones with really painful powerful endings that really it, it was extremely unpleasant to put it mildly it just felt like the whole earth was opening up from under me and, and, and about to swallow me whole. It was terrible because I didn't know how to work with the energies, you see. I, was, I wasn't looking at what needed to be improved, moved, tweaked, changed, you know, to improve my life, you know. I wasn't aware of it. And then it was just whoosh, ripped from under me because I wasn't doing the work. Uranus, change. See, change is going to happen. Whether you run with it or whether you try to avoid it, change is going to happen. And this is upright, so bam, it's going to happen. Be in the driver's seat and work with what you can because that way it's going to be a whole lot less painful if you're in control. But yeah, change is happening, guys. And it's for the better. You don't want these negative energies pulling you down. Let it go. Take action. Clear away any upsets. Break it up. Be the phoenix rising. Partnership. Now look, this is upright. And here we've got, see, Libra house. Libra rules, uh, Venus rules the Libra sign and the Libra house themes, this is upright. So partnership, whether that's romantic, family, friendships, see, it can work in your favour. Change can happen and you can make it work in your favour and others. This is upright and this is saying whatever partnership is going to go well. Give it a chance. Libra, balance, which no surprise here, see, we've got the Libra sign because um, there hasn't been balance from what I'm getting. There hasn't been balance. Does that see how we've got also cancer in reverse as well? So the And fourth house was also in reverse. So there's been some sort of dynamic to either do with your home life or some area that feels like home and the dynamic has been in some form negative it hasn't been working well needs healing for you and others you can be the alchemist like it says here take the lead take control before the eclipse takes it from you you know and then you know because that's what happens when the eclipse energies come through there, if, if we're not doing the work, it'll just pull something out so that it, it shunts us forward in the right direction, whether we like it or not. So it's imperative that we, especially with lunar eclipses, that we are in the driver's seat and we make every effort to try and um, bring the changes about that are needed, you know, because if we're making some form of effort to make the changes, then the eclipse isn't going to be, you know, um, unceremoniously 
you know, make, pulling the carpet from under us and making us flip backwards, you know, on our back. And see, so you've got the new moon energy here, so you can bring in the new that's going to be positive and you're going to be the phoenix rising and perhaps others will too by default. Okay, what's your numerology, Aquarius Rises? For November, what's your numerology? What is the numerology? Okay. Patience, right? Yep. Patience is needed. I mean, in all relationships, there's, you know, relationships are fickle. You know, we, we often need to have patience with ourselves and others, you know. Um, an orange is the, um, what is it, the, the sacral chakra? It's about creativity. Did we not get, yeah, we got Leo. Creativity in your Libra themed house of partnerships. Partnerships is upright, remember, and so was that. So you can turn these around and get that balance that's needed. And you and others will be the phoenix rising. Now, it's all orange, so it's about creativity. Two partnership number, boom. Oops, I put it there because I want you to. The ruling planet has a lot to do with, it's, it's working with Pluto, see. Now remember Uranus is still retrograde until the end of January next year pretty much. Um, Pluto's in his post-shadow. Again, he can still work with the retrograde in your favour. Music. Now, there's a couple of things this could be. It could actually be bring in music, connect together with others through music. And this is also orange with the um, sacral. Um, and yellow is the solar plexus. So there's a lot of the self-worth thing coming through. And again, um, Taurus is also ruled by Venus, which is about self-worth. Taurus didn't come through, though, but... The idea is still, um, yeah, that you need to get past these fears, stand up for yourself and perhaps others, and allow, allow the energy of transformation to come through because it's screaming. It really is. It's screaming out here. This need for change and transformation. Where else did we get? Two, three, four, five. Five Pluto references, five Scorpio references. So, yeah. Letting go of what is holding you back, allowing the new energy to come in to transform you and others. Yeah. Whether that's a shared interest in music or you jumping into your musical um, ability. If you, if you sing or play an instrument, as far as I'm concerned, you are a musician. So, you know, in any case, um, yeah, so jump into music if that's the case for yourself or, and or with others. Or it could be allowing yourself to open up and listen to the music of your soul and bring in the new moon energy, bring in the new. We didn't get Pisces, though. Did we get 12th house, Aquarius, Capricorn? No, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, no. So I think this is more about physical music in some form, whether that's singing, listening to music, playing music, playing an instrument, jump into that because I think it's definitely needed. Now three is about communication, action and activity. 
youthfulness and maybe this is going to bring more youthfulness into the situation you know fun like leo likes two again with relationships three and two is five and i think i for some reason i thought that five came through earlier i could be wrong though but yeah for some reason I, I focused on the number five for some reason and here it is here five means freedom you can bring freedom look at this you can bring freedom for yourself and others spirituality now here again spirituality um doesn't mean religion religion can be a part of spirituality but spirituality can be found in so many things including music playing music or listening to the music of your soul, you know, doing things that you love can can have a, a feeling of spirituality, you know, that can be part of your spirituality and healing. Music can be very healing, actually, you know, tapping into those emotions and stuff. Purple is a, a very spiritual color and can also be helpful for um, money. And I did tap on the self-worth money thing, even though Taurus didn't come through. It's Venus rules Taurus and Libra, see? But yeah, you can turn these around and end up having a happy, happy home. Because see, this is the journey you can go on. Be in the driver's seat so that you're clearing things away on your own terms you know you're using the lunar eclipse energy on your own terms you're in the driver's seat see this is what i'm trying to say rather than allowing it to just take control and just you know zoom through your whole life and just throw it all over the place and you're left sort of picking up the pieces with an eclipse especially a, <laughs> a lunar eclipse dang you know, because I've been through a couple and I really never want to go through them that way ever again. So I, I know how important it is to be in the driver's seat of that powerful energy. Because it sucked when I wasn't. Um, so anyway, yeah, seven is the mind and creativity. Now, this is a master number because it's doubled. And this is two sevens, mind and creativity. So this is about getting, focusing on these energies improving things for yourself and as a knock-on effect perhaps for others as well because look this is upright see even though this isn't this is in reverse this is in reverse this is in reverse because that's how it's been but you can turn all of them around too because this guy's upright telling you you can make it work with whatever relationship situation is going on break up the concrete in some way Uranus was here like what twice wasn't it where else yeah here Uranus twice saying hey this is your ruling planet as well so it's it's wanting you even though it's in retrograde right now it's wanting you to work with those retrograde energies to clear up any upsets and whatever dig it out like Pluto likes to do because then you've got that space ready to be the phoenix rising to to fill it with with this potent transformational energy rebirth the good energy good energy coming through that wants to improve your life that's the whole point of the retrogrades and the eclipses they're for us to you know nudge us forward to do the work to improve our lives and as a knock-on effect it can improve other people's lives too by us you know doing the work properly so mind and creativity is doubled up together that comes to a five and what did we get five is freedom boom we've got freedom again so you will feel free once you jump into this energy and do that bit of work clear away any of the negativity and then you're making space for the new and the good to come in and everything you can have that happy home environment whether it's your actual home that you live at or somewhere that feels like home anything that's had a bit of an upheaval or, or hasn't been working in some way or there's been just uh, the tension in some area it's going to be healed okay so Aquarius rising what is your you guys want to come out okay 
What are the messages of abundance for Aquarius Rises for November? Is there any other? Yep. Okay. Are there any other messages for Aquarius Rises on abundance? One last bit. Okay. No. Radio. See, this reminds me, it looks very um, like this little island on its own in solitude kind of thing. And perhaps that's how you've been feeling, that you've been feeling a bit disconnected with relationships. But this one's saying that doesn't have to keep happening. It, it's going to change for the better. See, change is going to happen anyway. You want it happening for the better. It's going to be for the better, whatever happens anyway. Um, but it's going to be less painful if you're the one in the driver's seat doing the work rather than something happening and then you're like, wow, I'm forced to have things a certain way and then pick up the pieces and try and do your best, which will shunt you into the right direction anyway. But you have the power to get in the right direction without having to be thrown around and have to pick up the pieces later because, you know, you're not letting the lunar eclipse power overpower you and take control. You take control. The trick with spending money lies in knowing with every fibre of your being that it will return, and so it must, as if on wings the universe. Now, I did tap into Taurus money, didn't I? I knew there was a reason I kept coming back to that for some reason because it's a, a, another self-worth thing. When you're looking after yourself, when you're doing the work to, to heal things the best you can, then it's going to be transformative and it's going to bring in that luck. And Remember, Jupiter's here too. The luck, the stability, the expansion, the growth, you know, the abundance. You can have it. It's kind of strange, but when you know exactly what you want to create, first you have to define it in terms of the end result. Second, you have to physically move toward it. You see, do the work. Um, and finally, you must let go of how you think it will actually show up, at which point the thing you want starts coming to you. On its own terms, from a direction completely unexpected, not unlike a cat. Yes, the thing you want is going to come to you. You do what you can and things will improve. Your relationship or relationships will improve. Home life, the home and hearth will be more peaceful and inviting again. Happy. What's this one? Oh, look, there's a tree with the sun shining through. See, the sun is the ruling planet of Leo. Leo's in your seventh house of relationships. Do wealthy people have to spend all their money to feel wealthy? No, that's silly. They don't even have to spend a cent, do they? Oh, you so have it made, the universe. Yes, you don't have to have money to be wealthy look after yourself do what you can to clear away any negativity and bring in harmony and happiness and by doing that work that's what the universe is going to see so that's what the universe will give you more of which then venus will come along and go oh you're looking after yourself here's some more luxury abundance love money whatever is needed to help you to keep feeling that good feeling again and have that happy home and hearth and balance in your life. You're going to find balance. Aquarius rises. November's going to be time for you to transform, heal yourself and others, you know, um, because of the work you're doing. You're going to make an effort to do for yourself. 
you know. Wow, okay. Um, yeah. So transformation. And you want to be in the driver's seat. You, I mean, if you, you ignore it, your own peril. Seriously, it's like that. With eclipses, it's ig ignore doing the work at your own peril. That's what I mean. Because you'll end, you'll end up having to pick up the pieces and, and you'll still be moving in the right direction. But it's going to sort of be like, um, almost like a, um, well, I want to say hiccup, but that's sort of more of a light version of it. But yeah, inspiration, yeah. Okay, is there any other? Yep, I thought so. Um, but yeah, hiccup is an easy, you want that one? Okay. Um, an easy way of explaining it. But it's, it's, it's going to feel like a setback initially when you're left sort of flat on your back because it's ripped things out from under you um, and you're having to pick up the pieces, that's going to feel initially like a setback. You don't want to go through that. Believe me, you don't. I've been there. Um, so get in that driver's seat. Do the work. It's going to be so much benefit to you and others. The healing will take place. Okay, is there any other messages from, yep, yeah. the guardian angels for the Aquarius Rises, I think we're done now. Sorry to sort of, um, what's the word for it, preach about it, but seriously, because this one came through, um, yeah, I, I think I really have to reiterate, jump into that and jump into that air energy because you really need to <laughs> i don't know how else to explain it you want to be in the driver's seat and you can this is telling you you can absolutely the change is going to happen and you can be the one to orchestrate the change in the way you want it to didn't didn't we have something somewhere that was like about um doing it in a way that you want it to be you know in, on your terms. Do it on your terms, not the eclipse's terms. Because the eclipse is just going to fly th through like a, you know, a tornado and just go. Pfft. Now, now you have to move forward in the right direction. That's what's going to do. You don't want that. You want to be able to go, right, I'm going to manoeuvre here and here and here. And this is the right direction, I know. So I have to work through this and bring about the transformation because it's going to happen anyway. So you realize that now. On that journey, see, this is upright. Go on that journey. It's it's not going to be scary if you're making the effort because it's going to be more scary to just sit back and hope that things get better or whatever on their own. It's going to eventually, but you're going to have to pick up the pieces if you ignore the work that's needed. <laughs> Acceptance. Um, there is nothing about you that you need to fix. Reclaim the disowned parts of you that yearn for love and acceptance. See? Love and acceptance partnerships. Yes. Um, you are beautiful just as you are, regardless of any faults you may perceive you have. You are an eternally radiant being of light. Accept all that you are and just be you. When you truly accept yourself... Your whole world will magically and lovingly transform. Bam. Inspiration. A wave of inspiration and a stream of beautiful ideas. Remember, ideas being, you know, um, creativity with Leo in your seventh. Um, beautiful ideas are about to enter your aura. It is important that you trust your intuition at this time. Pay attention to unusual thoughts that come to your mind and do not discount your imagination. Many wonderful ideas which have served humanity were initially scoffed at or ridiculed. We, your guardian angels, will help you discover ways to apply your ideas and manifest new realities for your life. How much newer reality can you be a phoenix rising, you know? 
with the phoenix rising it's going to be a new reality there's changes on the way and you can be the work I, I i'm sorry if i'm i'm being a broken record but i can't stress it highly enough be in the driver's seat <coughs> orchestrate the change in the way that you are happy with you be you be um in control of it jewel every event in life presents us with a new opportunity to experience ever greater love lots of relationship feeling stuff here and home and hearth um, there is a jewel to be found within every teardrop trust we your angels are guiding the current events this is a time in which you and those close to you relationship 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 and you and those close to you get this bit um oh where is it yep here it is will emerge strengthened by ever greater bonds of love transformation phoenix rising trust there is nothing to fear there is only love don't fear it do not fear the change change wants to happen in your favor you can orchestrate it the way you feel comfortable and happy with as long as you are working with the energies and moving towards making those changes opportunity wondrous possibilities and opportunities await you stop dwelling on past mistakes we've all done that surrender to the, the surrender to the past surrender the past lovingly there is nothing to regret all is always in perfect and divine order everything that you've ever experienced has helped you in some way the past is behind you the path ahead is clear move forward joyfully and fulfill your heart's desire yes work with that new moon energy once you've cleared away the, the difficulty because the new wants to come in positive outcome this is the final card guys come on positive outcome at this very moment you are sowing the seeds of your future through your thoughts feelings beliefs and attitudes whether through love fear or indifference you are always creating something so remember to keep your thoughts beliefs and attitudes positive and you will create a positive outcome and yes in some way that probably involves music whether it's dance to the beat of your own drum i like i was saying earlier it could be music of your soul the music of your soul allowing your soul to shine but we haven't had either 12th house or um pisces come through so i've got a feeling it's got to do with actual music playing music playing an instrument singing dancing sharing your love of music with others because there's relating with others definitely in a home peaceful happy environment you can have that and you can work to having that in your your way in in um yeah you can you can work with this energy um your way kind of thing if that makes sense you will be in control and yeah you it, it's going to be relationship improvements and improvements perhaps around the house to do with the house or to do with the emotional side of home or somewhere that feels like home improvements are going to happen because uranus is saying it change is going to happen the full moon eclipse is saying clear away the negativity because we want you working with the new moon and jupiter retrograde and uranus retrograde to get the phoenix rising for yourself and others yay yeah definitely very powerful um energy but it's really in your favor so you and you can make it the easiest possible way by agreeing to work with the um lunar full moon eclipse your way you know okay so on that note i wish you all the best of luck with all of this and until next time bye for now